Glory, hallelujah. Jesus is Lord. On today's episode, I want to talk about five foundational principles for kingdom prosperity. Five foundational principles for kingdom prosperity prosperity shall we pray heavenly father precious holy spirit wonderful jesus thank you for your word use me as a vessel to bless your people i pray that may your light dawn on your people as they listen to this world that it will become a blessing to their family and to their generation in jesus name i pray amen let's quickly go to the book of matthew chapter 10 the verse number 8 Matthew chapter 10, the verse number 8. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely ye have received, freely give. This was an instruction from Jesus Christ to his disciples. And when he communicates to his disciples, he's communicating to the whole world. Because he told the disciples in the book of Matthew chapter 28, the verse number 19, that was that, the things they should go and make disciples of the word and the things that they have learned from him they should communicate the same things to the people and so when he was speaking to the disciples he was speaking to the whole world and the church has formed an ideology with this very scripture that freely you have received and freely give and so they have come to the point that the things of god comes freely and they don't have to do anything anything at all to receive the blessings of god and so christians come to church and they fold their hands they don't even want to pray when you are doing worship they will not participate when you are preaching the word they will not do it when you the bible instructs us to go for evangelism they will not do it the bible instructs us to give our offering give our tithes they will not do it because they have concluded that freely you have received and freely give and so everything of god comes freely and this is killing a whole lot of uh christians this has sent people to early grave this has sent people that were meant to change the nations of the world and to impart the nations of the world go to the grave without fulfilling this purpose because they went to the grave broke they went to the grave broke they think that they will have to fold their arms and then god will rain money on them that is what they think and this has i mean killed many great destinies but it is not like that it is not like that hallelujah let's consider salvation for instance the bible reads in john chapter 3 the verse number 16 that for god so loved the world whereby he gave his only begotten son that who believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life so salvation therefore is free salvation is free you don't have to pay money to be saved but there is a condition to be met before you can be saved and god said whoever believes in him so it was on the platform of belief it was on the platform of belief until you believe you will never come to the level of receiving salvation what do you believe you believe that jesus died and rose on the third day for your sins and for your justification and once you believe it doesn't end there you also have to do something romans chapter 10 the verse number 8 9 and 10 says the word of faith we preach is near to thee for if thou shalt believe in thy heart the lordship of jesus and confess him thou shalt be saved the verse number 10 says that for with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation hallelujah and so you believe and now you come to the point to call jesus into your life to be your lord and personal savior so salvation is free but until you meet this condition you can never be saved so is that free there's a condition to be met. That is what I'm talking about. There are conditions to meet in order to appropriate the blessings of this kingdom. If you think it is freely and you don't have to do anything, you just have to sleep and to come to you, you go to your grave empty. You give, go to your grave empty and you will never be able to do the things that God has ordained for you to do. 
Hallelujah. God has created us in his uh, image and likeness and has given us power to rule this earth. We are representatives of God on this planet earth. And so God is looking up to us to do certain things. But until we come to the awareness that there are things that we have to do, there are conditions to meet in order for God to be able to use us or in order for God to pour out his blessings on us, we will never receive these blessings. So salvation is met or is given on the condition of you believing. And then second condition, calling Jesus to be your Lord and personal Savior. The Bible says faith is given to all. A measure of faith is given to every believer. But how does the faith come? The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God. So until you continuously hear the word of God, you will never be able to grow your faith. Your faith will be at the level of a, 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 a child. A child. You can never be able to appropriate uh, certain heights in the kingdom of God without growing your faith. It's come by hearing and hearing of the word of God. The same thing to divine healing. Healing is given freely. Jesus Christ has done everything for us to be healed. He says, by his stripe we are healed. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5. By his stripe we are healed. Everything that Jesus Christ did on the cross, he took our pains, our infirmities, and nailed it on the cross. And the Bible says that he died with it, and we died with him, and he rose, and we rose with him, and healing is given to us. The Bible says in Matthew 8, 17, that as it was prophesied by Isaiah the prophet, that himself took away our infirmities and our hearts, all our pains. So Jesus Christ has taken it, but there is something you would have to do before you can have divine healing, before it can work for you. You have to believe. You have to know what Jesus has done on your behalf, believe it, and then you walk in the fullness of it, walk in the light of it, speak it over your life, and make sure that you believe what you have spoken and live by it, whether the pain is so exists or not. You live by that fact that your uh, Jesus has taken your sicknesses away, and that is when you appropriate divine healing. Either than that, it is given to you freely, but you will never experience divine healing. Even if someone will have to lay his or her hand on you for you to have divine healing you have to believe the person open your heart to receive until you go to the person and until you believe in what the person is doing and until you prepare your heart to receive you will never be able to have the full i mean divine healing from this person hallelujah so the things of god are free indeed but it comes on a platform of certain conditions and until such conditions are met you will never be able to receive the blessings of God, or you will never be blessed in this kingdom. Hallelujah. And that is why I came by these teachings, five foundational principles for kingdom prosperity, things that you have to know and things that you have to do on your own, on yourself, in order for you to be kingdomly blessed or in order to appropriate the blessings of God in this kingdom. Amen. And number one, Prosperity in this kingdom is by choice. Prosperity in this kingdom is by choice. I will explain the points in the next episode, but today I'm listing the points. Prosperity in this kingdom is by choice. Until you make a choice that you want to prosper, you remain the same until forever. God is not against you when you decide to remain poor and go to the grave poor god is not against you you can be so anointed but poor and it is not god because god uh, is not angry with you if you choose to be poor he is okay with it if you choose to be rich he is okay with it and so it is by choice until you decide to be prosperous in this kingdom you will remain as it is and god will never be angry with you number two prosperity in this kingdom comes by your obedience and willingness to do everything the word of god instructs you to do all the instructions that is given by your pastor or your church prosperity in, in this kingdom comes by your willingness and your obedience willingness and your obedience i will explain in the next episode number three prosperity in this kingdom comes by understanding that god is a deity and every deity demands an offering or sacrifice from his worshipers god is a deity and every deity 
demands offerings and sacrifices from his worshippers. God is a deity. Until you know this and begin to relate with God as a deity, as a deity, you will never experience the prosperity of this kingdom. Number four, prosperity in this kingdom comes by understanding that pastors, pastors, teachers, apostles, evangelists, are the representatives of God on this planet. So they act on the behalf of God on this planet Earth. In the olden days, it was a Levite through the uh, the priest. So the people will bring uh, the things to the Levite and then the Levite presents it to the priest. The Levitical order. It was the Levitical order. But today we are in the, the order of Melchizedek. And Jesus Christ is in the order of Melchizedek. And when Jesus was living in the book of Ephesians chapter 4, the verse number uh, 8 downwards to 11, the Bible talks about that he gave gift unto men. When he ascended, he gave gift unto men. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some teachers, some pastors, evangelists, and what was what was there to do? They were to represent him. They were to represent him on here. And so these are the people that God has given to represent him. And you come to know that these are the people that stands in the shoes of God. You will never be able to appropriate it. When in the olden days, when Abel, the first person that was recorded of giving offerings, when he made the offering, where was he sending the offering to? Where was he? The Bible, it was a burnt offering. He burnt it. God demanded an offering and he burnt it. What does it prove to you? What does it prove to you? We will come there and I will explain it. When Abraham gave the offering to Melchizedek, where was Melchizedek? The Bible recalls in Hebrews 7 that Melchizedek has no mother, has no father, he has no genealogy. He just came from nowhere. Abraham went to do the war himself and brought everything out, risked his life and to go for the war and to bring the, those people uh, out. And the Bible says that Melchizedek, Melchizedek just showed up and take the offering, uh, take the tithe from Abraham. Do you know what it means? And the Bible calls this man Melchizedek that he is in the order of of jesus christ he's the order of jesus christ jesus christ is in the order of melchizedek and so and jesus christ when he came he came to do the priesthood work and when he was living he gave that order that order to the apostles the prophets the teachers the pastors i will explain further in the next episode number number five the offerings and the tithes are the portion of the pastors. The offering of the tithes are the portion of the pastors. In the olden days, that was what the uh, the Levites and the priests feed on. God said, they have, have given to them, they are my portion. And so, whatever the people brings to me, they receive in my name and then they feed on some. They feed on it and it is used to, I mean, take care of the tabernacle. It was used to take care of the tabernacle. It was used to feed poor widows and stuff. But you don't have to go to go and give to the poor widow or to go and give it to the beggar. You bring it to the Levite. The Levite presents it to the priest in the house of God and the priest do the what? The, the sharing. You don't do the sharing. You don't decide where you take it to. There is a place that is given to you. You bring it and then he, the priest, will do the rest. And the same thing. The pastors are put in place to take those things in the name of God. And they decide what they will have to do with it. That is how it is. And until you come to this revelation, you will never be a blessing in this kingdom. God cannot trust you with certain riches, certain prosperity that will affect nations and affect generations. God will never trust you with it because he said, true prosperity shall my kingdom be spread abroad. And so God will want us to propagate the gospel. God will want us to send the gospel to the Isles, the islands that do not know Christ, the cities and the villages that do not know Christ. And you and I know that you can you cannot walk to uh, India to go and preach the gospel. You cannot walk to even in Ghana here, certain villages you cannot walk and carry instruments on your head and walk with people to north and certain villages to go and preach the gospel. You have to go by car and you would have to 
I mean, uh, buy instruments and other stuff to go. There are people that you even have to clothe. There are people that you even have to help. People that are sick that your ministry and your service will have to help them. And God demands that you, you become rich and prosperous to be able to do this work effectively. Without prosperity, your message will not even be heard. Your message will not be heard. Hallelujah. And this is why God will want you to prosper. And this is why God has laid on my hair and on my heart to bring this message to you so in the next episode we will take the points one by one and i'll explain it hallelujah god richly bless you may god anoint you may god prosper you may god elevate you may god grant you a revelation may god open you up to the mysteries of this kingdom in the name of jesus christ and by the power of the holy spirit amen peace shalom